I want to welcome to the show now Tom Essay, uh, founder of the Sevens Report Research. Tom, good to see you. We also have with us Jared Blickery, of course, and Brian Sazi. Um, guys, something came over the wires just a short time ago, and I'm sure you saw it. Uh, the former president of the Fed in Minneapolis suggesting that the current Federal Reserve should actually go negative with interest rates when they meet next week, that that would actually help things. Tom, this is controversial. There are other parts of the world that already have negative interest rates. What's your feeling on that? Yeah, I, I don't think that that would be a tremendous benefit, frankly. I mean, rates are already at zero, right? Everybody's borrowing. It's, the, the problem isn't the cost of money. The problem is demand for money because the economy isn't turned on. They need to focus on how, on how to get people to want to borrow more money and, and get businesses reopened. If we go negative, all you're going to do is just further pinch the banks, which are already in a tight spot because of lack of loan demand and because of slow net interest margins. So I don't see the benefit in it. And it hasn't worked anywhere else, incidentally. Japan hasn't worked and it hasn't worked in Europe. So I, I hope they do not do that here. Tom, let's say the market, uh, let's say Fed officials do in fact do that. Does that send a, a negative signal to the markets that despite all the stimulus they've done, all the bazookas they've come out and ripped out of their back pocket, that it may not be working? Yeah, I think it does. Because it, it, again, the problem isn't that, that money is too expensive, that interest rates are, are punitively high. They're, they're already zero. The problem is stimulating the demand for money, getting the economy reopened. Really, that, that should be everybody's focus. The Fed has done tectonic moves to help stabilize markets, and those are needed. But at this point, they can't reopen the economy. That really need, needs to be what we get clarity on so that people can, can begin to sort of live normally again. It'll take time, but we need to get started. Yeah, and you know, to your point, I believe Georgia is gonna start reopening their economy to some extent today. Um, and the governor there getting a lot of criticism from President Trump and others saying that it is just too early. And it, it is, there is that push and pull, right? Because we're seeing the numbers disintegrate regarding our economy. We're seeing 26 and a half million people applying for unemployment benefits, Tom. Um, wh what do you do as an investor as you see the numbers continue to crater and, and you know that perhaps the worst is yet to come? Do you just sit it out or do you seek out opportunity? I think if you're longer term time horizon, and by longer term, we're talking years now, I think that there are opportunities here because eventually the economy will reopen and things will return to some sort of semblance of normal. I think in the near term, the fact that stocks are resilient uh, clearly shows they think that the economy recovers a lot sooner than the data would imply. I mean, I, I showed a chart in our report last night of jobless claims against the last four recessions and it's just the context of this can't be overstated. It's the jobless claims are enormous. They're historic. We'll hopefully never see anything like this again. So in order to be buying stocks here, you have to be very confident that we are going to bounce back in a matter of months because the economic hole we're in is historically deep. Tom, you know, I'm a loyal reader of your, your morning notes. Uh, in many respects, that's how I start my morning. And one point you made in your note today uh, is to investors not to ignore data. Do you think they're ignoring data? Uh, thank you for that, number one. And, and number two, I don't think they're ignoring the data. I think that they're focused on the marginal rate of change. And this is something really important for retail investors especially to understand. The market, the market professionals don't focus on the absolute number per se. They oftentimes more focus on whether it's getting less bad. And that's exactly what's happening with the economic data. So all the data is horrific, but it's getting less bad than it was, say, a couple of weeks ago. And that's especially true with jobless claims. So markets are focused on that marginal change, and they think that the worst will be behind us when we move to May and June. They better be right, because these numbers that we are getting are awful, and hopefully they are. Hey, Jared, I want to check in with you now. I know you've been watching oil all week long, and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin is coming out with some comments about a lending program for the struggling oil companies. What's the latest there? That's right. Uh, details are scant, but it just kind of ties in with our conversation about the Fed. I imagine the Fed would eventually be involved in some ways. The, uh, the Treasury might make an equity investment or equity-like investment because they would be receiving potentially shares in exchange for their loans, and that would probably be leveraged through a Fed program. And so this is just moral hazard writ large. It's nice to see these energy companies uh, in the green today. And we can look at what's happened here over the last week. 
Um, again, a lot of big numbers here, especially from some of the smaller producers and an oil service company like Schlumberger. Uh, if we take a look at year to date, though, um, it's still down about 57 percent. And just getting back to the price of crude oil, uh, if the Fed is in the market with these high yield or gets into the market with more high yield companies, and it almost has to support the uh, energy companies overall, uh, where's the end game here? I don't see how the Fed ever extracts itself from this. What about uh, your thoughts on, on this lending program for the oil companies, um, Tom? Should, should the government be getting involved here? Should they allow some of these companies to simply fail? I think they should. Uh, and, and, and to Jeremy's point, I mean, we might as well strike moral hazard from the dictionary because that's not really a term anybody you know, is going to use anymore. I mean, the Fed over the, the past month has essentially said they'll buy whatever they need to to help support a functioning market, which is important. But at the same time, are oil companies, are all these oil companies really systemically important to the U.S. economy? No. And oil has to find a global supply demand balance. So if some of them are high cost producers and the price stays low for a long time, guess what? They should fold like the laws of economics dictate. Over time, that will cause the price to rise because supply will go down and demand will go up and maybe they can come back at a certain time or new companies will be formed. But we, we can't totally cut off the natural flow of the economy, economy and capitalism in order to insulate everybody from loss. Tom, I'm surprised by how oil stocks have, have held up this week. Do you think they're value traps? Uh, depending on your time horizon, yes. I mean, if, if an ExxonMobil or a Chevron or a BP, we're talking about the, the big, the majors, over the longer term, are they values here? Yeah, probably, because the natural equilibrium for oil is not $17, right? In a couple of years from now, oil will most likely be, be higher than that once the global economy recovers. But at the same time, a lot of the smaller players, yeah, I think they are, because the capital needs they have are going to be intense. And if they don't get big loans from banks, if banks begin to rein in loans or they don't get a bailout from the government, they're not going to make it. And so you have to be very selective. I would say go with the majors, go with the large caps to be safe and have a longer term time horizon. You know, Tom, we're, we're in earnings season now. Uh, you know, for somebody in your position, you look to earnings as a huge metric for how to value a stock. How do you even begin to do that in a market like this when when companies are coming out like American Express, like our parent company, Verizon, and saying, look, the future is, just looks too murky. We cannot give you a real outlook on our business. How do you begin to value companies in that environment? Yeah, you, you, it's very tricky. I mean, I've, I've been in this business multiple decades, and I have never seen an environment from an earnings standpoint like this, not 9-11, not the financial crisis, not the tech wreck. I mean, they really have no idea what the rest of the year is going to look like, because we have no idea whether the economy is going to be reopened in June, July, August. And then when it does reopen, when do people behave normally again? So I think you just have to take a wide swath and you really have to focus on looking at both 20 and 21 as a blended earnings. So if you do that, it gives you an idea of, hey, 20 is going to be a mess, but let's look out to 21 in an aggregate number and we can get an idea for valuation. It looks like the number is somewhere between 140 to 155 for the S&P 500, and then we can base a multiple off of that. But it's, it's very, very tricky. All that said, the market is not cheap here based on earnings, period. And, and, and that's just the way it is. And so the market has baked in a lot of hope going forward. And, and that very well could come true. We just have to realize it. All right. We're going to leave it there on, a, on an optimistic note, if you will. Tom Essay of Sevens Report. Always good to see you. We'll catch up with you soon. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.